Welcome to this in-depth educational video on laser eye surgery. I'm Ismail Arbabi, consultant eye surgeon and the lead for laser and vision correction services at the Royal Liverpool University Hospital. In this video, I will aim to give you a complete A to Z guide on almost all aspects of laser eye surgery, including the risks and benefits, so you would have a good understanding of the topic and hopefully better equipped with the knowledge to make an informed decision about your laser eye surgery. I will cover the following topics on laser eye surgery, including safety of laser eye surgery, statistical result, what to expect before, during and after laser surgery, as well as giving you some tips on how to choose a surgeon if you decided to proceed with surgery. Although this is an extensive video on the topic, it's important that you discuss the particular risk and benefit that applies to you with your own surgeon. This is a long video, so if you wish, you, you can skip the video and go to the relevant timestamp as shown here. Otherwise, get yourself a cup of coffee and enjoy this one-stop educational video, which I hope will make the whole journey towards laser eye surgery clearer for you. Before going into the topic of laser eye surgery, let's see how the eye work as this will help you in better understanding the rest of the video. This is a cross-sectional picture of the eye. The laser eye surgery is performed on the cornea, which is the front window of the eye as marked here. You touch your eye in the center, you essentially be touching the cornea. So laser eye surgery is what we call an extraocular surgery as we do not go inside the eye as opposed to an intraocular surgery. The human eye is truly remarkable in its design. In order to see clearly, all the light rays coming into the eye must focus into one single point at the back of the eye on the retina. As you know, the light passes in a straight line. Therefore, the eye needs to bend the light rays to focus them on one single point. One of the most important functions of the cornea and your natural lens is to do this bending of the light. If the cornea and the lens have the correct shape and power, the bend, they bend the light just enough to make the incoming ray come into focus on the retina. As you can see on this picture of a normal eye, all the rays focusing onto the retina, hence forming a sharp image for the brain to see clearly. In people who are nearsighted, long-sighted, or have astigmatism, the light rays do not focus onto the retina without glasses or contact lenses. If you are nearsighted, the globe is either too long or the cornea and the lens are too powerful in bending the lights. As a result, the light rays are focused in front of the retina, as you can see on this diagram. The longer the eyeball, the higher the glasses prescri prescription would be. N nearsighted people struggle to see distance objects such as detail on TV screen or driving vision without wearing their glasses but they often able to see objects if they bring them very close to their eye. They wear what we call a concave lens or lenses with a minus power on their glasses, which diverges the light and focuses it back onto retina. It is opposite to people who are long sighted. The light rays focuses behind the retina, as you can see on this second diagram. If you are young, you may still be able to see distance and near object without glasses. This is because your natural lens is still flexible and able to change the shape and autofocus to increase the bending power of the light rays and focus them back onto the retina. This, however, exposes the eye to stress due to the need for constant use of the eye muscles called accommodation, which may lead to eye fatigue and headaches. As the natural lens stiffens with age, patients with long sightedness are no longer able to accommodate and, and they become dependent on glasses more and more or they require contact lenses. Patients with long sightedness wear what we call convex lenses or lenses with a plus power which converges the light to bring it into focus onto the retina. The third refractive error is what we call astigmatism. This is caused by an irregularly shaped cornea or a lens. Normally the cornea is symmetrically round shaped like a football. In person with astigmatism, the cornea is shaped more like a rugby ball, which is more curved in one direction vertically than it is curved uh, horizontally. 
As a consequence, light rays focus on more than one point, as you can see on this third diagram. Overall, the image will be distorted or blurry. Now that you know how the eyes work, let's see what are eye lasers and how do they work. Modern eye lasers have an incredible accuracy. They are, they are actually accurate enough to engrave words into human hair. In fact, IBM, who were the early pioneers of laser eye surgery, engraved the words IBM not once but actually twice on top of one another on a single strand of a human hair which was published all around the world. This is a highly magnified electron microscopic image of the hair strand with the word IBM engraving. This is possible because the eye lasers, instead of burning living matters, each laser pulse breaks the chemical bones in a very thin layer on the surface of the tissue, effectively disintegrating it without causing any heat damage to the surrounding tissue. The eye lasers correct glasses prescription by accurately and precisely changing the shape and the curvature and focusing power of the cornea. It's like carving the contact lens prescription onto the cornea. So if you're long sighted, the laser makes the cornea more powerful at bending the light rays and vice versa if you are short-sighted so effectively the rays will come into focus onto the retina there are two different types of lasers used in laser eye surgery either alone or, com or in combination one is called eczema laser which uses light from the ultraviolet spectrum the second type of laser is called a femtosecond laser this uses light from the far infrared spectrum. This laser works by creating extraordinarily small bubble, each less than one thousandth of the strand of a human hair, which allows the tissue to, to be separated. The duration of each pulse is only one femtosecond. To put this into perspective, it takes 1.2 seconds for the light to travel from moon to the earth. However, in one femtosecond, the light will only travel 0.3 millimeter. So essentially it will take three femtoseconds for light with its speed to travel one millimeter. This is why these lasers are called ultra fast lasers. Final effect is a perfect cut of tissue without any damage to the cornea. The actual laser process of the surgery usually takes about 30 seconds per eye. Now let me take you through different types of laser eye surgery treatments that are available. There are effectively three main types of laser eye surgeries available worldwide. LASIK or PRK is the first generation of laser eye surgery. Here the superficial skin of the eye called epithelium is removed manually. The eczema laser then corrects the vision by evaporating a precise amount of tissue on the cornea. I personally really use this procedure because although it's very effective, it has a slower visual recovery and also the eye can be quite painful for about one to two days after surgery as the superficial skin of the eye grows back. I personally only use it for those who are not suitable for newer generation of laser eye surgery. The second, la the second generation of laser eye surgery is called LASIK. Here, instead of removing the superficial skin of the eye, a flap is created. These days, the flap is created with a advanced femtosecond laser. Traditionally, this was created with a special blade called microkeratom. Some older clinics who don't have access to the femtosecond laser, they continue to use the old traditional microkeratom. The flap is then lifted and the corrective treatment applied by the eczema laser, same as in LASIK and PRK. And finally, the flap here is repositioned, which adhere back to the eye by itself. This technique revolutionized laser eye surgery when it was first introduced back in early 90s. As overnight, laser eye surgery became painless with clear vision in a matter of one or two days. LASIK continues to be the most popular laser eye surgery. The third generation laser eye surgery is called Smile or Relax Smile, which is a flapless laser eye surgery which aims to, to maximize comfort and minimize any disruption to the eye. 
a total of over 2.5 million smile procedures has been completed worldwide by end of 2019. When comparing these three procedures, it is important to realize that the risks and benefits are similar between them and all three procedures normally produce very good results in the correct patients. However, in some people, one type of laser could be preferred over another type of surgery. It is important that you have a very comprehensive assessment to see if you are suitable for laser eye surgery and secondly deciding what procedure suits you and your lifestyle best. Now we move on to the next topic which is about suitability. There are six main criteria when assessing the suitability and good candidates for laser eye surgery. Firstly, you must be at least 18 years old and ideally 21 years or older before having surgery. There is no real upper age limit for laser eye surgery as long as you're eye healthy. However, all the people, especially those over six years of age, can get naturally occurring cataracts and therefore may be more suitable for refractive lens exchange, which has all the benefits of laser eye surgery, but in addition, it will deal with the cataracts at the same time, essentially hitting two birds with one stone. You may ask yourself then, why not everyone having, uh, having a refractive lens exchange? The reason is because refractive lens exchange is a more invasive procedure. This is what we call an intraocular surgery where you have to go inside the eye. And that's the main reason that people have laser surgery and only we move on to refractive lens exchange if they're not suitable for laser eye surgery. Secondly, your glasses prescription must be stable. This usually means your prescription shouldn't have changed by more than half a unit or a half a diopter over the preceding two years. Thirdly, your glasses prescription should not be higher than minus 10 diopter if you're nearsighted, or if you're long-sighted, your glasses prescription shouldn't be over plus 4.5 diopter. In certain patients, up to plus 6.5 diopter of long-sightedness can be treated. And if you have astigmatism, this should not be over six diopter. This is what a glasses prescription look like. The right prescription is often on the left-hand side of the page and vice versa. In this patient, the prescription for the right eye is minus 3.5 diopter under this P SPH column, which stands for sphere, and minus four diopter for the left eye, which means this is a nearsighted prescription. This patient is nearsighted in both eye as he's wearing minus lenses. If this was alongsighted, the SPH or sphere column would have had a plus power. You can see under the CYL, which stands for cylinder, the patient has minus two diopter in the right eye and minus 1.75 diopter in the left eye. This means he has a stigmatism of two diopter in the right and 1.75 diopter in the left eye. You do not need to worry about the plus or minus signs in the cylinder box or the third box, which is the orientation of the stigmatism. Alternatively, the glasses prescriptions may look like this one. Here, OD means the prescription of the right eye and OS means the prescription of the left eye. The rest is the same as previous example. The fourth criteria to be able to be suitable for laser eye surgery is not to have any major eye problems such as keratoconus, major cataract or severe dry eyes. And the fifth criteria is not to have certain medical conditions such as rheumatoid arthritis or other active autoimmune diseases. And finally, for ladies, they should not be pregnant or breastfeeding. Now I explain why people may choose to have laser eye surgery and what are the benefits beyond the obvious ditching of glasses and contact lenses. Laser eye surgery often bracketed under cosmetic surgery. However, in reality, this is not strictly true as laser eye surgery can improve the function and quality of life rather than just improving the, the, the appearance. In fact, some people find wearing their glasses trendy but still opt to have laser eye surgery for a variety of reasons. 
five major reasons why people may choose laser eye surgery beyond improving appearance are firstly in many hobbies and sports such as swimming as well as some jobs such as working in a steamy environment it is not practical to use a spectacle secondly many people may become intolerant to contact lenses over time even if they did not have any issue initially contact lens intolerance can cause the eye to become red irritable or even painful therefore laser eye surgery can give these people their life back can you imagine if you're a keen or professional footballer and you suddenly become intolerant to contact lenses and can no longer wear contact lenses thirdly some people have extreme poor sighted and therefore can barely if at all function without glasses or contact lenses so for them starting their days and waking up with good vision without a stumbling to find their glasses or contact lenses can be quite an emotional and fulfilling experience fourthly convenience really for many the prospects of uh, not having to insert contact lenses every day in and out of the eye or constantly defogging and cleaning their glasses in wet and the steamy weather condition could be just a good enough reason to opt for laser surgery fifthly it can actually be a smart investment the cost of glasses and contact lenses will quickly add up according to a published study in the journal of british contact lens association the total annual cost of contact lenses for someone who wore them every day was 529 pound for daily disposable lenses and 330 pound for monthly lenses therefore a 10-year cost of contact lens according to this calculation will work out between three to five thousand pounds which is the average cost of laser eye surgery in most places we can use the analogy of buying a house versus renting it yes there is an initial larger payment when you own your house but this is an asset and an investment over long run like buying a house there is an initial higher fee with laser eye surgery compared to contact uh, contact lenses and glasses but over years this become this usually become financially cheaper in addition to the added benefits that patients get from laser eye surgery you can use my cost calculator by clicking on the link to find out how much you could be saving in long run one of the most amazing thing about laser eye surgery is speed at which your vision is improved after laser can smile you will find your vision has improved almost straight away and this continued to improve overnight most people find themselves overjoyed at their instantly enhanced vision for such a life-changing surgery the recovery period is rapid the procedure is quick and the recovery time is minimal allowing you to enjoy greater freedom with your vision so is laser eye surgery safe with 30 years track record of groundbreaking improvement in laser eye surgery technology and over 40 million procedures performed worldwide laser eye surgery in fact is one of the most popular and most successful elective surgeries in the world with a remarkably high satisfaction rate amongst patients who have had the procedure according to the Royal College of Ophthalmologists 95% of patients are satisfied with the outcome of laser surgery and many actually describe it as life-changing however like any other surgery there are some risks fortunately in most people even if a complication were to occur it tends to be mild and short-term and usually treatable however a small percentage of patients they can experience a long-term and serious complication that may cause a eye discomfort or visual problem the chance of a serious complication is about one percent in general and probably less than 0.3 percent in an expert and experienced surgeon some people are at higher risk of complication than others for example if you have very high glasses prescription or you have certain eye or medical condition your risk is likely to be higher therefore a thorough pretreatment assessment 
is vital to ensure you're suitable for surgery and if you're at higher risk this is discussed with you glasses are the only vision correction option which are totally risk-free all other vision correction options including contact lenses have their own risk so what are the statistical result and research result for laser eye surgery there have been many published studies in the literature that evaluated the result of laser eye surgery one of the largest review paper actually aggregated data from 97 other major studies and 67,000 eyes that had LASIK surgery. Show that LASIK had very high success rate with 99.5% of patients having better vision than driving standard without glasses and 99% of patients were satisfied in the, according to this study with the laser eye surgery. The glasses prescription after laser surgery was one diopter or less in 99% of uh, patients. This study also found in only 0.6% of patients the vision was worse by two or more lines on the visual chart compared to the vision before surgery. This study was published in 2016 and acknowledged that the aggregate results were much better in the past decade compared to the compared to the studies published using all the laser technologies. It therefore concluded, I actually quote from the study, modern results support the safety, efficacy, and patient satisfaction of the procedure. Another two big studies called PROWL1 and PROWL2, which stands for patients reported outcome with LASIK, assess visual symptoms before and after LASIK surgery in identifying changes over time. These two studies were the result of a collaboration between military and non-military ophthalmologists in the USA in conjunction with the FDA or Food and Drug Administration. These two studies found over 96% of patients had 20-20 or better vision without glasses. More than 95% of patients were satisfied with the vision following LASIK surgery. It also found 28% of patients developed mild dry eyes after LASIK, but in 65% of patients who had dry eye symptom before surgery had no dry eye symptom after LASIK. It also showed that less than 1% of patients had symptoms that gave them a lot of difficulties with with uh, gave them a lot of difficulty or prevented them from doing their usual activities. Now I will take you through detailed analysis of the risks associated with, la with laser eye surgery and also explain how common they are on average. Dry eye symptom is by far the most common side effects. About 30 to 40 percent of patients can actually experience some degree of dry eye symptoms post-surgery. The reassuring part is these symptoms tend to be mild and resolve in overwhelming majority of cases. If you are going to get dry eyes, it tends to be worse in the first three months and then resolve over the next six to 12 months. Although persistent and severe dry eye symptoms are rare, especially if you didn't have any pre-existing dry eye symptom before laser eye surgery, they may still occur in about 2% of people. So there is a very small risk that you may have to live with dry eye symptoms or require long-term or permanent treatment for dry eyes. In a very small subgroup of patients, dry eye symptoms actually can be very distressing and debilitating and may affect all day-to-day -day activities. The second most common symptom is experience some degree of visual disturbances such as glare, halos, starbursts and decreased quality of vision overall. This can particularly be troublesome in, in low light level and may affect particularly nighttime driving. This complication used to be more common with the early generation of laser technologies. However, with the modern flying spot techno laser technology and new algorithms, this is far less common now. These symptoms 
occur in about 20% but tend to resolve spontaneously in most people. Rarely, they may need additional treatment or repeat laser surgery to resolve. In a very small number of cases, these symptoms actually may not resolve or be treatable and may cause permanent symptoms. In Prowler's study, less than 1% of patients had visual symptoms that significantly affected their day-to-day -day activities. The third most common side effect is under or overcorrection of your glasses prescription so that your glasses prescription may not quite be close to zero. Less than 5% of patients may require enhancement, which means repeat laser treatment to smoothen out any remaining nearsightedness, farsightedness, or to correct any irregularity of the corneal surfaces. The repeat laser is usually suitable and highly effective in majority of patients to correct any residual glasses prescription. However, a very small number of patients may not be suitable for enhancement and hence may still need glasses or contact lenses after surgery or they may need to have other type of surgery. Therefore, it is important to understand that it is not always guaranteed that you'll be glasses free. Another important point to realize is that it is normal to require reading glasses from around the age of 45 years with good uncorrected distance vision. This is a normal aging process which is called presbyopia. This process explains why people who have never required glasses in their past start to wear glasses for reading and near work once they get in their fourth decade of life and beyond. This process is not altered by laser eye surgery. So if you have laser eye surgery before this age, you are very likely to require glasses for reading once you get in your fourth decade of life and beyond. However, there are effective treatments available to, re to reduce the spectacle dependency for all the patients, such as presbyon laser blended vision, or refractive lens exchange or monovision. Now it's important to understand laser eye surgery results are intended to be lifelong, but in a small percentage of patients, they may, they may encounter what we call regression, where you may become nearsighted or become longsighted again. This regression is more common in people who are longsighted and on those people who have their initial higher glasses prescription. This may happen months or years down the line after the surgery. One of the most serious complications is corneal ectasia. In this condition, the inner corneal layer becomes weak, causing cornea thinning and irregularity of the eye surface, which leads to essentially poor vision. This condition is similar or maybe identical to another condition called keratoconus, which occurs in one in two thousands of general population who never had laser eye surgery. The risk of corneal ectasia after laser, after laser surgery with modern lasers is generally lower than in general population due to the diagnostic pretreatment test, which highlights those patients who are at high risk. This condition used to be more common with early LASIK technology when a microkeratin used to cut the corneal flap than it is with the advanced femtosecond laser, which is a bladeless surgery. A study by NICE estimated the risk of ectasia was 0.2%, but highlighted that most of the affected eyes may have been selected inappropriately for LASIK treatment, which means a lot of them should not have had laser eye surgery as they were at high risk. And this should have been picked up by the treating surgeon before surgery. This used to be the most dreaded complication, which usually require a corneal transplant. However, over the past decade, luckily, there is a treatment called corneal collagen cross-linking, which is very effective if the condition is diagnosed and treated early. Another serious complication is corneal infection. This is estimated to occur in about one in 4,000 cases. Again, if this is diagnosed and treated early, it can lead to good visual outcome, but it has potential to cause significant corneal scarring and may require corneal transplant. If you are a contact lens wearer, then your risk of getting a serious corneal infection is actually one in 3,000. With a laser eye surgery, the risk of infection 
if it occurs tend to happen in the first a few days to weeks or maybe months post surgery however with contact lens the risk of infection is always there for as long as you're wearing contact lens another complication which specifically happen only in lasik as opposed to prk and the smile is those that related to the flap because this has a flap and these flap related complications do not happen in lasik or in smile which is a flapless surgery however the risk with flap has significantly reduced with modern bladeless femtosecond laser compared to the first generation lasik which used a microkeratom these complications if occur include misalignment of the flap epithelial ingrowth and inflammation and abnormal healing of the flap these complications may require another procedure and or intensive treatment with eye drops most of these flap complications often can be treated successfully however very rarely flap related complication can lead to permanent decrease in vision another rare but extremely serious condition is called corneal neuralgia where the corneal nerves or the nerves within the eye become hypersensitive it can cause burning stinging and light sensitivity however in some patient it can cause excruciating and debilitating pain which may be difficult or even impossible to treat and may require a strong pain killer tablets as well as many eye drops corneal infection or inflammation may lead to corneal haze or corneal scarring which can be minimal and not troublesome or could cause a significant visual loss about one in five thousand or 0.02 percent of patients may need corneal transplant as a result of these complications or if they develop other complications such as corneal ectasia corneal transplant is a major surgery but if required a good level of vision can often be restored in most people although glasses or contact lenses are likely to be required after the surgery and the visual rehabilitation and gaining vision may take quite a long time and may take many many months what i have explained so far are the main complications which could directly be caused by laser eye surgery however in theory there's always small risk that you may get indirect complication of laser eye surgery i would not go into those complications but they may possibly include things like retinal detachment glaucoma bleeding and so on as i explained there is 0.6 percent chance that vision may be worse than it was before surgery but what about risk of blindness is there risk of blindness well in theory there is an exceedingly small risk of blindness with laser eye surgery but this is a lower risk than wearing monthly contact lenses for one year a risk that everyone seems to ex accept perfectly well it's estimated that the chance of going blind in one eye as a result of laser eye surgery is around one in five million to put this into perspective the chance of someone in the uk dying by falling out of the bed is one in two million and the chance of getting struck by lightning in a year is one in 1.2 million this means an individual is four times more likely to get hit by lightning every year in the uk alone than going blind in one eye because of laser eye surgery there has been a few reported cases from around the world where people lost extensive vision after having laser eye surgery but fortunately these are exceedingly rare if you have a comprehensive pre-treatment assessment and excellent aftercare review so if there was any complication this is diagnosed and treated promptly increasing the chance of a very good outcome also with today's knowledge and the cutting edge technology the risk is ever smaller now than ever before if through an extremely unfortunate and unlikely series of event a laser eyes procedure were to cause blindness it's highly unlikely that you would lose vision in both eyes for this to happen it requires a serious event to happen in succession and diagnosis and treatment delayed or even ignored so even in the one in five million scenario 
it's improbable that you will lose your eyesight entirely. So as you can see, the risk of blindness as a result of laser eye surgery is very rare indeed. Now we talk about what are the alternative options to laser eye surgery. As you know, laser eye surgery is an elective procedure, which means you can decide to proceed with, with it at any time or not at all. There are three main alternative options to laser eye surgery. The first one, as you must have guessed, is staying with your glasses or contact lenses. Glasses are risk-free, but may limit the range of activities you can, you can confidently and comfortably do, particularly sports and exercises. Contact lenses provide good all-around vision. They do not miss over during sport and will help you to be more active, but they can be inconvenient when traveling, make water sports more difficult and dangerous in certain activities such as swimming, showering, or during sleep. Contact lens wear is sometimes associated with eye surface discomfort and may be complicated by sight-threatening infection. Second option is refractive lens exchange. This is the preferred option in all the patients as this will deal with any pre-existing cataract that all the patients are likely to have, but it also ensures they will never get cataract again after this surgery. Third option is called fake implant. The most popular is called ICL implant. These are very thin lenses, which is especially, they look like contact lenses, but they are implanted inside the eye, so you do not feel them. These are particularly useful for people who are not suitable for laser eye surgery, who are usually younger than 45 years of age. Moving on, so what to expect before, during and after laser eye surgery and how quickly you can resume sports and wearing makeups. Let's start with what you should do and expect before the surgery. Firstly, remember one of the suitability and criteria was to have a stable glasses prescription over two years. Therefore, you need to get a, your glasses prescription for the preceding two years from your optician and bring that with yourself for your initial assessment to ensure that your glasses prescription is indeed stable. Secondly, contact lenses can change the shape of the cornea and therefore can affect some of the measurement we take. Therefore, if you wear contact lenses, you need to completely stop wearing them and wear glasses. The length of time that you need to be contact lens free depends on the type of contact lens that you wear. If you wear soft contact lenses, including the toric and extended wear lenses, you should stop wearing them for two weeks before your initial assessment. However, if you wear rigid gas permeable or hard contact lenses, you should stop wearing them for at least four weeks before your initial visit. Once you get to your pre-treatment consultation, including taking many different measurements of your eye and a full eye examination as well as asking you many questions about your lifestyle and your health to evaluate if you can undergo vision correction treatment safely and to decide what type of surgery best suits you. This may be LASIK, LASIK, smile procedure, or you may not be suitable for laser eye surgery and the alternative options such as refractive lens exchange or ICL implant may be a better alternative treatment for you and your eyes. Now let's see what you should expect and what you should do on the day of surgery. It is important that you, don't, you skip any makeup on your face, so don't use any eye makeup, cream, perfume or lotions. All laser correction procedures are performed using an anesthetic eye drop to numb your eye. A special instrument is used to gently keep your eyes open. It is okay to blink during the surgery as long as you do not squeeze your eyes during the surgery. You should not experience any pain, but you may feel some gentle pressure sensation and touch sensation around the eye during the procedure. The advanced laser machine precisely and accurately reshape your cornea to match as that of your glasses prescription. During the surgery, you'll be asked to focus on a point of light. 
you may detect a distinct smell as the laser reshapes and removes a tiny amount of corneal tissue usually both eyes are operated at the same time and the surgery takes about 10 to 15 minutes to complete the actual laser part take less than 30 seconds you will return home soon after the surgery now let's take you through the aftercare and what you should do and expect after you have had the surgery and when can you resume sports and normal activities immediately after the surgery you are likely to be watery feel a little bit gritty and sore and irritable and also may feel a little bloodshot you are likely to notice some improvement in your prescription almost immediately this is particularly noticeable in people who have a very high glasses prescription who suddenly even after getting out from the laser bed suddenly notice that they can see the clock face or they can even read the uh, clock on the wall and this could be an emotional experience for a lot of people but overall the vision will still feel foggy and not 100% right the vision continues to improve over the preceding uh, 24 to 48 hours you will be given drops to use for about two to four weeks the drops will include an antibiotic an anti-inflammatory or steroid drop and also some artificial teardrop the length of your recovery period depends on the type of laser surgery you have had in general LASIK and the smile patients can expect to have good vision and return to office-based work within 24 to 48 hours after surgery patients who undergo LASIK or PRK surgery may take up to one week to recover also if you had PRK or LASIK your eyes are likely to be very uncomfortable for about two to four days time as the superficial skin of the eye grows back and for this reason people have LASIK they will have quite a lot of uh, tablets as well and painkillers to help them through this initial two days where the skin is growing back this slower visual recovery and initial discomfort is the reason why I really use LASIK and are only offered to the patients who are not suitable for smile or LASIK surgery. Your first follow-up appointment usually is about one to two days after surgery. During your recovery period, it's important you avoid any eye makeup for up to two weeks after the surgery. You can resume wearing face makeups such as foundations and concealers or lipsticks and uh, the rest of it one week after the surgery. This table give you some generalized recommendation on when to resume different sports and different activities but we will give you a personalized advice depending on your individual circumstances and the rate of your recovery now I'll give you seven useful tips on things to look for when you are choosing the surgeon and a clinic that is right for you and help you meet your needs when it comes to vision correction surgery the first and most important tip is to ensure your surgeon is an expert in the field of vision correction surgery there are a few things you need to consider when deciding if your surgeon is an expert firstly make sure they are on GMC specialist registers an ophthalmologist and they should have formal training and ideally a fellowship specifically in the field of cornea and vision correction surgery as well as having other certification and accreditation such as certificate in laser refractive surgery from the Royal College of Ophthalmologists there are over eight subspecialties in ophthalmology and unfortunately very few eye surgeons get any formal and extensive training in the field of laser and vision correction surgery and hence it's very important to ensure they have had this training secondly remember LASIK isn't the only game in the town really uh, so ask if your surgeon offer a full range of vision correction treatments including refractive lens exchange ICL implant and different types of laser eye surgery not just one single laser eye surgery this will ensure they always offer you what best suits you and your lifestyle rather than pushing the boundaries and offering the same procedure to everyone thirdly ensure your surgeon has the correct training to deal with any rare complication that may occur laser refractive surgery is performed on the cornea 
and therefore if there was any complication it tend to affect this part of the eye therefore a corneal specialist will be equipped with the tools and uh, understanding to diagnose and treat any rare complication promptly as this is likely to increase the chance of a good outcome let's go to tip number two which is to educate yourself about the procedure so you fully understand the risks and benefits so you can make a well-informed decision about your vision health this involves meeting your surgeon so you can discuss all the specific risks and benefits that applies to you as well as reading the literature and the consent form thoroughly tip number three relax and take your time this is an elective procedure and therefore there is no need to rush to surgery after your initial consultation and meeting your surgeon I recommend you have a cooling off period of at least one week before proceeding with the surgery tip number four ensure the center has modern and advanced technologies some centers have inherited all the generation lasers and diagnostic equipments which which although works okay they are likely to be missed they are likely to be missing many new features which can make laser eye surgery safer such as advanced eye tracking latest wave front machine or latest diagnostic machine which are better which are better at picking up existing pathologies that may preclude you from having laser eye surgery at first place I always believe the surgeon and the staff around him is the most important factors not the technology because a good surgeon and the staff around will refuse to do an elective surgery if the machine is not up to the standard but having the latest technology can always help tip number five ensure the prices are transparent this is important for two main reasons firstly it ensures that you end up paying what you expect and led to believe that you would be paying at the end of the day rather than getting any surprises later on secondly it will also ensure the pricing is fair so you are not paying more than someone who for example may be good at negotiating a price be aware of some possible misleading statement such as laser eye surgery for only 398 pound or similar these tend to be a bait and switch tactic once you book your free consultation you usually see what is widely referred to as a counselor who is who in reality may be a well-trained salesperson selling laser refractive surgery it is sad that these approaches and tactics are still widely employed in the UK and around the world which distract from what is the most important excellent patient's care tip number six be aware that volume alone is not a mark of excellence or high quality surgeon therefore someone who has performed thousands of LASIK by virtue doesn't mean they are better laser surgeons the actual surgical part of laser eye surgery is the easiest part however what is more important is is that the surgeon is up to date with the latest advancements and techniques and have a full clinical and scientific understanding around the field so they can make the best decision for you based on the current scientific evidence rather than relying on outdated knowledge and skills tip number seven ensure the treating center provides an out-of-hour care this means a doctor is available even if they are very rarely required ideally you want to have access to your surgeon's phone number if at all possible so finally let's wrap up so in conclusion laser eye surgery is very safe procedure with a high patient satisfaction rate however like any other surgery it has some risks fortunately in most people even if a complication occurs, it tends to be mild and short term or resolve spontaneously or be treatable but a small percentage of patients can experience long-term and serious complication that may cause eye, eye that may cause eye discomfort or visual problem 
the chance of a serious complication is about 1% in general and probably less than 0.3% with an expert and experienced surgeon. So should you have laser eye surgery? My personal recommendation is if you're quite happy and satisfied with your glasses and this is not affecting your day-to-day -day life or vision, then your best and safest option is to stay with your glasses as this is the only risk-free option to correct your vision, whether you are short-sighted, long-sighted or have astigmatism. However, if you, are, if you feel glasses is a not good fit for you or you are wearing contact lenses, then considering laser eye surgery is a valid option because unlike wearing glasses, contact lens is no longer a risk-free option. There is risk of getting serious corneal infection for as long as you wear contact lenses. Therefore, you have to balance the risks and benefits of laser eye surgery versus risk and benefit of wearing contact lenses. If you decided to proceed with surgery, it is essential you choose a well-trained and fully accredited surgeon who will perform a comprehensive assessment to ensure you are a good candidate for surgery as well as ensuring you get a comprehensive aftercare. Remember, all the laser surgeons can do the surgery as this is the easiest part of the process. However, what is more important is that the surgeon is up to date with the latest clinical and scientific advancement in the field and has the knowledge and expertise and the integrity to always recommend treatment that is best suited to you and your lifestyle after comprehensive assessment and discussion and discussion of all the risks and benefits in your specific case and thank you for watching this rather long video which i sincerely hope has been helpful and hopefully make it clearer for you to make a decision based on some facts and understanding about the procedure Thank you.